Hey guys, Reagan Boggs here, and I am continuing the series of things that I wish I knew. I'm in my car today. It's going to be a very hectic week for me, and I did want to get another video up in this series, so I apologize for the lack of professional <laughs> look and feel, but you know me. I'm an ACOA, so I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so hey, this may be therapeutic for me. <laughs> um, quick topic today, I guess. Um, I feel like, you know, over the years, off and on, I, I have struggled with bouts of depression. I know a lot of folks do, and this is not particular to ACOA. ACOA meaning adult children with alcoholics, if you are not familiar with that term. And, um, you know, I've hinted two different topics around self-worth and self-value, but sometimes the, um, the depression that we deal with from ACOA's perspective does tend to uh, very strongly relate to our self-worth and our value and trying to always uh, get that externally and um, I've listened to a lot of really good information on this and read several books about it and so Again, all of my videos are really related to how things affect me personally. Again, <laughs> I'm not a therapist. And, um, you know, depression can be caused by so many things. It's very complicated, chemical imbalances. You know, the, the causes for depression can vary depending on the person. But, you know, when I get depressed or I have a really hard time bouncing back from that feeling, you know, that, um, I think it was Keats, one of the poets, <laughs> it, it described, you know, being underwater and really having to, uh, fight with yourself to want to kick, to get back to the surface, to, to find the willpower to actually want to do that is how it's described. And I don't know if I've ever been that, um, that bad. But there are times when I just really lose the ability to care about things. And that's what depression really is. It's, it's not feeling sad. And that's what people kind of have a misconception about, you know, is that when you're depressed that you're sad. And that's not at all what it is. It's apathy. It is that you, you can't drudge up feelings of sadness, excitement. You can't drudge up any feelings like that at all. It is just this flatlining of the soul and you can't muster any motivation just to do anything more than basically what you have to do um, and sometimes that doesn't even happen you know and um, you know let's face it that's all of us have those moments it's just some of us are a little more able to bounce back from it than others and um, you know, like I said, it's, for me, it's sometimes it's easier than others. And um, there are, I, I can talk about three different things that has, has struck me when I hear people talk about depression and why and ways to kind of get out of it. Um, and one for some people now this was this one is actually not me as much but when you're tying your your self worth or your value in another person when you need to have someone else's approval and not a, a huge amount of people just maybe one person in particular and for ACOA sometimes it's the the alcoholic parent or the the addicted parent if it's not alcohol, if it's, if it's meth, I mean, whatever, um, if it's not them physically, then maybe you have put a surrogate in your life with a partner because in partners, unfortunately, we tend to look for what is familiar to us. And with many folks, that is familiar suffering that people bring on. <laughs> True, right? You know it is. And, and that person may be where you kind of are, are getting yourself worth and value from. And if for some reason that person disappears in your life and you've put all of your eggs in one basket, 
then all of a sudden your source for your self-value is completely gone and you are unable to adapt or see a way to shift that to somewhere else. It's really hard for people who, who do that. Um, and you also go through a little bit of a grieving process because even if that person is still alive, they are no longer, you no longer have access to them and you go through the whole grieving cycle. So you not only do you have depression, but you also have grief and a whole of no, no source for self reinforcement of your self worth. Um, so that's, that's, and, and then we try to shift that, right? And sometimes if you shift it away from a person, then you, you shift it away to finding your value from your achievements. And I think um, this one is where I fall in. And um, I think I can, I can trace back to like music for me when I was a young kid, because I've, I've been playing music since I was three years old. I got a guitar when I was six, and my family was very musical, and I've talked about this in other videos. Um, I love music, and this is something that I, I really have to really stare in the face pretty hard, is how, how much of my love of music is for real, my love of music, and how much is that me trying to um, feel valued for something that I can do that maybe not everyone else can do. Therefore, it's almost my superpower and makes me special and makes me uh, different from other people. And also by um, my dad, who was musical, but also, you know, he was the alcoholic and he always was with his friends and people who did what he did. And we were pretty much a nuisance. Children are to be seen and not heard. And any time that he did approve of anything that I did, you know, it was my my certificates of band player of the week, or if I had won a beauty pageant, you know, he would staple my uh, my sashes or something to the walls and. Um, so I was almost like his trick pony, somebody who's like, oh yeah, bring your guitar down here and sing a song and it would make him proud and then, you know, he would get very irritated at me if I, I kind of stubbed up and didn't do that because I was very backward as a young child. So, um, so I, I did, I'm sure, make a connection when I was little that, hey, if I achieve and I do certain things and at least what little Tommy's around, he'll be proud of me. And my mom was not very affectionate either. I mean, she loved us. I don't think we ever had a doubt that she loved us, but just the way that my family is, they're not very touchy-feely, huggy um, kind of people. And, and she really had a lot of her mental bandwidth tied up in chasing him, following him to the bars and making sure he wasn't cheating or um, trying to figure out how to pay his debts. I mean, she really had a rough way to go. So, uh, for us as kids, I mean, we, we were kind of, we all felt a little bit like we were an afterthought. And, you know, in that kind of life, it's very much like a war zone. And, you know, everyone kind of plays their part. So, when you're, when you come from that kind of a background, your social skills are zero and when I was at school I felt invisible I felt stupid and when I had participated in my first 4-H show and I got up and I did my song and I come back and I sat down in the cafeteria floor with all of my classmates and then all of a sudden all of these classmates wanted to start sitting next to me then it's like oh hey how are you because know, you know for some reason at that point, I was special, at least for that day, and then I would go back to being just me. Uh, that, that wore off, but things like that can't not click. And so, you, when you are achievement uh, driven, and you find your value from the things that you achieve, you're always chasing something, and it's fleeting, and even if if you're coming from an ACOA background, the things that you achieve, 
you, you give yourself such a big kick in the butt for everything that you achieve. It's almost like all of the good feedback that you get is like, well, people just don't really know. And the one bad comment is like, yeah, those people really get it. And so you don't even, you don't even celebrate the successes when you get them is what's really ironic. Um, so you're chasing this approval and this superpower and your self-worth and your inability to be human because heaven forbid you're human. Um, because ACOAs tend to have this perfectionist thing. It's like everybody else can be human but us. Is it's, it's hard and we put such standards on ourselves that are so hard to achieve. So when you aren't measuring up to your viewpoint of what you think you ought to be, what you think your life needs to look like, you know what you're going to fall into depression unfortunately you know it's going to be um, hard to maintain any equilibrium because you're always up and down up and down up and down and as long as you stay busy and keep yourself occupied um, and driven you can keep it at bay but the very minute you, you, you get still that's when things start creeping in and um, so you it's hard to know how to fix that it's it's not something you just do overnight and it's very uncomfortable and um, you know when I you know I was very driven in music up until the point you know I like I said I play guitar when I was six I was in talent shows when I was a young kid. I started playing pretty much full-time music when I was 15 years old, playing in bars, playing with house bands, touring all over the place, and I didn't really take much of a break until I was about 32, 33, when I uh, ended up having my son. And it was very hard to, to learn who I was without music because it had been such a big part of my life you know, it was the reason that I woke up every day. It was the focus of, you know, what songs am I writing today? Am I, do I, am I recording a new album? I'm planning for that, recording that, sending CDs out to radio stations. I mean, when you, when that's such a big part of your life and all of a sudden you've reduced that to just a just tiny thing and your priorities start to shift, then you start to kind of, you don't understand who you are anymore without it. And and that's the same if you have put that same kind of power, because really that's what you've done. You've put power in, into a person, into a career choice, um, that you, um, you, you struggle to find your place, your self-worth, because we all want to be valued. We all want to feel like we're not just taking up oxygen and resources on the earth, right? We, we want to feel like, you know, if something happened to us today that somebody would actually care if we were gone. And, um, you know, being a mom and, and shifting that, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a shift. And um, it's, it's a struggle to, to find where your value is when you're constantly looking for it externally. So, um, you know, things that I've done over the years um, to to kind of combat that is, um, is to not be so wrapped up in outcomes of what I'm trying to produce and really uh, enjoying what I'm doing while I'm doing it and understanding that um, I don't need a superpower um, to be special. I don't really need to be special. You know, there is beauty in ordinary, and, and that's not me trying to say that you shouldn't have dreams or aspirations, because as I've said in other videos, we all need things to look forward to and to keep us occupied and 
and mentally challenged. We all need those things. But that's what they just need to be, you know, things that we find joy in and not things that are going to constantly keep us in a state of up and down, highs and lows. Um, because our you've got to be okay with yourself and, um, you know, take care of yourself, uh, keep yourself healthy, and, and, and I've talked about fitness before, you know, your body is a machine, and your quality of life depends on how well that machine will run, and depression and mental health is, is very uh, tied to how active and, and stuff that you are. Um, so I want you to look at that. I want you to look at where you are finding your value. And, and if you are okay with who you are, and if you feel like that you are contributing to something beyond yourself, and identify that because it's it's not obvious to us when we're going through it that we are are doing that we think that we're just driven and that we're doing something that not everybody has the stomach to do and success in itself is is all of those things it goes back to understanding your why we've talked about that in other videos it's, it's very important to understand the reasons why you do what you do. And, um, and then you'll be able to put a magnifying glass on the root of what's causing your depression. You know, it's, um, it's what, is, what is acceptable to us in, in our life. And if we are falling short of what we feel is acceptable, whether that's how we look, um, our career, people that's involved in our life, um, and when we just can't really see a way to make things like that come to, to fruition, it's it's hard. And you know, all I can all I can say is just to get out and try different things. You know, you have to experiment. You when you're in the throes of depression, you're most important friend is movement and getting yourself up and getting yourself engaged in something even if it's small <laughs> you know and sometimes it's hard to find those things you know if it's just something as simple as reorganizing your house feeling like you're making some progress in something start small and, um, you know, sometimes to, to really hit your self-value uh, issue, you may need some professional help to do that. You really, you really might. And a lot of us kind of have a, a bad taste in our mouth when it comes to therapy and uh, getting help because we don't like to ask for help. When we're ACOA, we, we want to be very independent. Sometimes we're pretty private. We don't want to air our personal experiences with people. And uh, we don't really realize how much um, our past has affected us today. But it has. It has. So, you know, be kind to yourself and um, do the work especially if you feel like you are falling into these depressive states pretty frequently and it's not just you know the winter blues or blahs or, or whatever they want to call it or if and if you're experiencing it and you maybe have gone and gotten help and all they've done is throw medication at it you know if you have a shitty life your know, medication's not going to fix that you have to take steps into improving your life situation, no matter how small um, that you can make little 
you know, chisel away at that. You, you need to make that effort. You know, medications are the easy way out in a lot of cases. And I'm not diminishing folks that really need medication. Not at all. But like I said, it's not a fix-all for everything. Uh, I love you. And uh, hopefully we'll get back on a regular schedule of, of filming these pretty soon. And I apologize for the video from the car. But I appreciate you, as I always do, for your time. And I hope you do find this information valuable. Please like, share, uh, like my page, go to YouTube and like my channels. Uh, follow my music. Um, thank you so much.